Good morning in North America, afternoon in Europe and Africa, and evening in Asia. I'm Bruce Tatters, CEO of Red Cloud Securities. Today's webinar features Sol Gold, one of the premier gold and copper exploration development stories in the world today. Projects in politically secure regions boasting massive reserves and resources. Its most advanced project, Alpala, hosts one of the largest undeveloped, undeveloped copper gold porphyries today. On June 30th, Sol Gold made a major announcement to acquire all the issued and outstanding shares of Cornerstone Capital Resources. Today, I'm joined by Nick Mather, CEO, who will provide a brief presentation about their bid for, for Cornerstone. After the presentation, we will take questions live. Please send us your questions via chat and we'll get to as many as we can. You can type in your questions to the chat box at any time. I would also mention that a special website has been created for this offer, www.solgoldofferforcornerstone.com, or by simply going to Sol Gold's main web page and by clicking the pop-up link. To start, we'll handle the disclosures and then get into it. For Sol Gold, there may be some forward-looking statements on this call. I would direct listeners to the cautionary note on page two of the corporate presentation. For Red Cloud, I would highlight that the webinar is for information purposes only and should, be, and should not be considered a solicitation to purchase or sell or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. And we note that this call does not take into account particular needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigations and seek their own professional advice. Please see most of our recent research located on our website for Sol Gold for specific disclosures. So now I will turn it over to Nick to begin the presentation. Thank you very much, Bruce. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a great pleasure to uh, present uh, Sol Gold to you and thank you very much to uh, Bruce Tatters and to Red Cloud for organizing this uh, webinar. The, the story I'm uh, about to tell you is about uh, Sol Gold as an emerging copper gold major. Uh, this company has a string of projects in uh, Ecuador, which is one of the, the richest and most underexplored copper gold provinces uh, in the world. And uh, Sol Gold has established a pipeline of projects which promises to deliver the asset base to uh, create an, a, a, a copper gold major, uh, which will have uh, intergenerational relevance to uh, global copper and gold markets and certainly to Ecuador and the Ecuadorian people uh, as we move the, uh, the company forward. Um, how do I change the slides, Bruce? Right, thank you. Um, I want you all to uh, read the cautionary uh, notice there. Um, it's, uh, it's long and involved, but uh, as Bruce mentioned, you should uh, seek your own advice in respect of uh, whether you accept uh, Sol Gold's bid for uh, Cornerstone uh, or not, if you're a Cornerstone shareholder listening to uh, this webinar. And uh, I certainly point out that uh, a number of the statements that we'll be making in this presentation are forward-looking. And again, you should seek your own professional advice in respect of the significance of those statements uh, to you as either a Sol Gold shareholder or a, a, a Cornerstone shareholder. So there's, there's a couple of uh, key features which I want to point out to you uh, in respect of... Uh, of uh, Solgon and its uh, and its major project. First of all, uh, the company has defined as its first project the Alpala uh, deposit in uh, northern Ecuador. It has approximately uh, 21 million ounces of gold and uh, 10 million uh, tons of uh, copper that's been defined in it through mineral resource estimate number three. In the preliminary economic advice to uh, 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 announced in, in May last year, we were able to demonstrate a net present value of some $4.3 billion for the, uh, for the project and an internal rate of return of around about 26% on a capital development cost of $2.7 billion for a 55-year mine life. 
uh, that translates uh, to a value uh, in Sol Gold, which is significantly above our current market capitalization. And um, I have to tell you that the effect on uh, Cornerstone, we believe to be significantly less than that as a result of the constraints around Cornerstone's ability to fund uh, their share from a debt point of view in the development after feasibility is reached. The quality of the project and the management team at uh, Sol Gold was uh, initially endorsed by Newcrest and then BHP during uh, subscriptions into the company at then premiums uh, to our, our share price. And uh, even though there have been some disagreements in respect of our financing strategy for the project, uh, those companies, uh, in my view, still regard this project as uh, potentially uh, something that will make a difference to uh, their asset uh, base uh, going forward. Uh, and certainly their shareholdings uh, in the company are, uh, by all accounts, very important to them. We are currently working on a pre-feasibility study, which uh, we aim to be finished by end of Q3 in 2020 this year, and then a full feasibility study, which we aim to be complete by the end of uh, June in, in uh, 2021. I'm sorry, I seem to have had a power outage here. Just hang on one minute. Uh, Bruce, I'm just going to move my uh, computer because uh, I've had a power outage in my house, which is um, causing some problems. I'm sorry. It's no problem, Nick. That's better. Yeah, your lighting is much better there. Yeah, so can you see me now? We can see you now. Yeah. All right. Okay, carry on. Yeah, that. Um, uh, one of the uh, downsides of an old house. Um, so uh, the uh, El, El Palo uh, pre-feasibility study, as I mentioned, um, due to be completed uh, during uh, 20, uh, 2020, uh, end of uh, Q3, end of September. That's what we're working towards and we're making good progress, working on a number of key elements of the pre-feasibility study um, all at once. Um, we are backing up the Alpala project with uh, a number of other projects, 13 in fact, through the length of Ecuador on three parallel metallogenic belts, uh, which we uh, took the initiative of in 2014 of uh, securing over 75 different licenses. And each one of these has strong mineralized systems in them and promises to deliver projects that are 100% owned by Solgold with the opportunity to also define uh, world-class tier one assets, um, thus providing the uh, project and resource base to make uh, Sol Gold one of the world's great uh, copper and gold uh, development and mining companies. And this sort of upside is something that uh, current Cornerstone shareholders can take part in uh, if they accept the, uh, the Sol Gold bid. Next slide. So we have uh, just over 2 billion shares on issue and a, uh, a market capitalization of uh, some $560 million uh, US. We have uh, currently approximately $50 million cash in the bank. And uh, if we complete on the uh, Franco Nevada royalty deal, we will be fully funded through uh, to the uh, completion of the feasibility study and to a development decision for uh, Alpala. Our major shareholders are BHP and Newcrest and uh, DGR Global, which uh, I also run listed on uh, ASX. 
and the uh, funding uh, in 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 gross terms comes from Franco Nevada through the sale of a one to one and a half percent royalty for between 100 and 150 million dollars um, at our election, uh, and this is for a uh, a royalty which uh, provides shareholders of Soul Gold with a, uh, a much less dilutive uh, method of uh, financing the next phase of the Alpala project than if we just uh, issued cheap uh, equity to uh, to fund the company. So, uh, next slide. The project uh, is held by Exploraciones Nova Mining SA or ENSA. Uh, Sol Gold has a registered and beneficial interest in ENSA of 85%. Cornerstone owns uh, 15%. Cornerstone is debt funded by Solgold until the end of the feasibility study, at which stage uh, they have to contribute at, at least 10% or dilute to a 0.5% net smelter return, at which stage Solgold has the right at any time to purchase that royalty for three and a half million dollars uh, US. It's important to note that Solgold's funding is a debt funding. Cornerstone is not free carried. Uh, Cornerstone must contribute to the development costs at at least 10% uh, or dilute to uh, that royalty. And we believe that the bid that we are currently making for Cornerstone uh, relieves Cornerstone and its shareholders of that funding risk going forward. So uh, it's a generous bid not only from that point of view, but from the point of view that it's at a significant premium over the past year and uh, and currently after we've made the bid, the Cornerstone share price has still not reached parity with our bid. And uh, we believe that uh, this demonstrates a significant upside for uh, Cornerstone shareholders if they uh, accept the uh, sole goal bid. Next slide. Our board and management um, has been uh, uh, strongly behind the project and uh, the pursuit of the ultimate feasibility and development of this project for a number of years now. It's a very large uh, world-class tier one uh, project. Um, I am the CEO. I have my own money invested in this company, a substantial amount of it. Um, I am a very ably assisted by Brian Moller, who's the chairman and uh, a corporate uh, lawyer based in Brisbane who's been uh, involved in many uh, mining transactions in the past. Uh, Rob Weinberg, independent director based in uh, London, where most of our uh, equity market is, is based. And James Clare, based in Toronto, uh, is a very valuable uh, addition to our market, especially uh, when uh, when you you take into account that our secondary listing is on the uh, TSX. Liam Twigger uh, is a a mining finance consultant based in Perth in Western Australia, and Jason Ward has been instrumental in the development of the project and the construction of. Um, all of the protocols that we employ from an exploration and a social point of view uh, in the uh, progression of the uh, Alpala project. We are making some further uh, board additions to address uh, the very important ESG requirements um, that the capital markets have for the financing of this project over the years to come and uh, hopefully there, there will be some announcements in the near future uh, about board additions. Uh, recently, uh, Newcrest saw fit to uh, pull uh, their nominee, Craig Jones, um, off our board. Uh, one can only speculate as to uh, why, did, why they did that. We know that Newcrest are making some significant advances in respect of Block Cave uh, mining technology, and we know that um, they were uh, not happy about us doing the Franco Nevada deal, uh, which valued our project at $3 billion rather than the 500 to $600 million 
um, that our market capitalization sees. So the Franco Nevada deal uh, is something that is way, way, way less dilutive to our shareholders, all of our shareholders, uh, than, uh, than doing uh, cheap equity issues, uh, which was the, uh, the stated uh, desire in the press of, uh, uh, of Newcrest. Next slide. Our board is very ably assisted by um, a very talented and rapidly expanding management team. Um, from a financial point of view, the appointment of Ingo Hofmeyer uh, a year ago has been uh, fantastic for us and Ingo is spearheading the development of a conditional financing package uh, to raise around $2.7 billion US for the development of the uh, Alpala project. And as we announced last year, we're making significant progress uh, in that area from a debt point of view and from an offtake point of view based on the very high quality concentrates um, that we're seeing from the metallurgical testing at Alpala. Eduardo, Eduardo Valenzuela, uh, Chilean, very experienced with the development of uh, major bulk uh, mining uh, copper gold projects in Chile, um, is ably assisted uh, by B Peter Holmes, who's always been also been involved in uh, the development of, uh, of bulk tonnage um, copper gold projects. Our uh, uh, metallurgical expert, um, uh, Greg Harbort, is uh, in-house and championing and heading the assessment of the metallurgical characteristics of um, the ore body. And uh, uh, we have uh, recently uh, engaged Steve Balahalak, who's um, a uh, underground mining engineer with uh, considerable experience and skills uh, to spearhead our in-house uh, block cave uh, mining expertise. This is all based on a fantastic database that's been put together by uh, Ben Whistler, uh, who's been with the project from its inception, and he works on the database that is uh, put together by uh, Santiago Varca and his team of Ecuadorian geologists in, uh, in uh, northern Ecuador. The direction of the technical program is headed up by Dr. Steve Garwin, who's um, a recognised global porphyry ex expert and has had a lot of experience with uh, Newmont. And uh, Steve has been instrumental in designing the exploration programs uh, that uh, Santiago Barker has executed and that uh, Ben Whistler has uh, recorded, stored and, uh, and assembled into a usable database, which um, innumerable experts and, um, and other organisations from a financing point of view have been reviewing um, on the uh, our power project. Next project, next slide rather. The reason that we're so keen about Ecuador is that the, uh, uh, the metallogeny sits in three uh, major belts, a very early one, uh, slightly younger than Miocene, and then there's uh, uh, an Eocene belt that uh, Alpala is located on and also hosts in northern Ecuador, uh, Escondida and Chuquicamata, uh, two of the world's very great uh, bulk uh, copper gold ore bodies. What we're finding in Ecuador is that uh, these things also have rich cores and they're also gold rich, uh, and that is meaning that these projects are very financeable and we're finding repetitions of that geology as you go through the uh, Ecuadorian metallogenic belts. Next slide. And you can see here our uh, 13 or 14 other projects down through the spine of Ecuador on those three parallel metallogenic belts. Um, this area covers the same area as northern Chile, uh, which represents 25% of the world's copper resources and copper production. We have in Solgold, the opportunity to replicate that all at 100% other than our power, which we currently own 85% of, uh, all 100% uh, in, uh, in one company. And that is uh, an unparalleled opportunity for uh, the shareholders of Solgold. And we are inviting Cornerstone shareholders uh, to join our share register and take part in the upside that's offered by this 
uh, integrated and, uh, and, and very complete uh, uh, pipeline of projects of uh, potential world-class and uh, tier one quality. Next slide. These projects are exemplified at the, the hand by uh, uh, Paul Veneer, where we're uh, planning our first drilling program. We're mobilizing drill rigs there soon. The interesting thing about Paul Veneer is that from a surface geochemical and uh, a magnetic survey point of view, it looks better than Alpala. The surface outcrops are at least twice to three times as long at uh, significantly better copper and gold grades. We're very confident about the results that will come from our first phase drilling there. And uh, we're inviting uh, Cornerstone shareholders to become part of Sol Gold and take part in the upside uh, that Paul Veneer uh, will deliver us. And of course, there's, there's other projects like La Hueca on the next slide. Um, sorry, Selene is the next slide, but uh, this is in the Cisne Lohair project area. And uh, at Selene, we're finding a 1.2 kilometre by 700 metre wide uh, zone of uh, high grade copper and gold outcrops in a, in a very coherent zone that again, we're very keen to uh, get drilling rigs into and we're working on getting uh, drilling access into that uh, project area at the moment. These are the sorts of projects that uh, provide Solgold with the opportunity to transform from a single project company into a multi-project uh, company that will provide the basis for the re-rating of the Ecuadorian economy and the construction of one of the world's great copper and gold mining companies. Next slide. At La Hueca, especially Target 6, uh, we will be planning the next drill campaign after Port Veneer, and this again promises to uh, deliver a significant uh, copper gold porphyry ore body. And we can see in the outcrops in the creeks there the same style of mineralization that we see in the Alpala project uh, in northern Ecuador. Next. At Rio Amarillo, which we recently put an announcement out on uh, again 100% owned only 30 kilometers to the southeast of uh, of Cascabel in northern Ecuador we can see a string of significant copper porphyry systems uh, they're uh, capped by a, uh, a litho cap that covers some six square kilometers for the largest one and uh, signs of mineralization over a vertical extent of some 1500 meters and uh, uh, continuous rock chip channel samples in the uh, in the outcrop at Rio Amarillo that are indicative of major copper, porphyry, and uh, and gold systems. So again, we're very excited to get our drilling rigs uh, into Rio Amarillo. We're just finalising the final permits to get in there, and this again provides uh, Sol Gold shareholders. Um, uh, the opportunity to take part in another significant re-rating for uh, Sol Gold on the basis of a significant uh, copper gold porphyry uh, system. Next. Alpala uh, sits amongst the, the world's uh, top five developable uh, copper gold uh, porphyry systems. In fact, um, the only two that are uh, apparently better than it are in the uh, the DRC and uh, in Alaska. Um, both of those um, have um, uh, various problems and uh, we believe that uh, Alpala is the uh, the most financeable and most developable of uh, all of the available uh, independently owned, non-major owned uh, copper gold porphyry systems in the world accordingly. Um, being a shareholder in the company that controls this asset uh, presents shareholders with uh, great upside and that is uh, something that uh, we believe Cornerstone shareholders should have uh, a view to when assessing whether they should accept the uh, sole gold bid for their Cornerstone shares. 
Next slide. One of the features about uh, Alpala is the very low modelled uh, copper cost um, or copper production cost. Uh, we're talking about uh, a life of mine uh, production cost of 91 uh, cents per pound. In the first 25 years, it's only 25 cents uh, per pound. That's just for the copper. Uh, and of course, the gold uh, on that basis comes for free. So this project has very spiky uh, front end uh, cash flows, as you can see from the uh, from the next slide. And this is one of the reasons why we believe that Sol Gold has a great future in terms of using the cash flows from Alpala to, de to develop uh, successive uh, new projects. This is one of the features that uh, we believe makes Sol Gold uh, an, a unique uh, investment proposition, um, both in the eyes of uh, small shareholders and uh, and the majors alike. And we invite Cornerstone shareholders to take part uh, in the upside that's created by our string of projects through Ecuador that have uh, rich cores and, uh, and higher grades. Next. Our project is uh, progressing rapidly. We take a, a, a strategy and sole goal of advancing the project on a number of, of fronts um, at the same time. So we're working on the financing, we're working on the metallurgy, uh, we're working on the mining strategy, we're working on the site logistics uh, and tailings disposal uh, facilities all at once. And we aim to, to uh, uh, culminate in a completed pre-feasibility study by the end of Q3 this year. Um, and uh, and then we will be uh, conducting uh, the feasibility study by the uh, middle of, uh, of 2021, uh, at which stage Cornerstone uh, will either uh, contribute at, at least 10% or dilute to uh, uh, a 0.5% NSR, uh, which we can buy for three and a half million dollars. So there are significant financing risks for Cornerstone. And uh, we believe that our offer to Cornerstone shareholders obviates uh, them of that risk and uh, provides them also with the upside offered by Solgold's pipeline of other projects throughout Ecuador. Next slide. The Franco Nevada uh, deal provides um, for a, a 1% uh, royalty for $100 million US. We can upsize that to 1.5% for $150 million in total uh, at our uh, election. It is a conditional deal. It's subject to Franco completing their uh, due diligence studies, which import, importantly includes uh, a site visit or uh, a satisfactory variation of that. Um, we are working with Franco um, to uh, assist them in getting through that due diligence um, study. Importantly, this royalty deal values the project at around about $3 billion, which is five to six times uh, more than our current market capitalization. So it's a way, way better deal from a financial point of view for Sol Gold shareholders uh, than to go pumping out uh, cheap equity uh, to the uh, to the majors such as uh, uh, Newcrest or, or BHP. So um, we uh, we obviously commend the uh, the Franco Nevada royalty financing. Uh, deal to uh, shareholders of Sol Gold. We don't have to start making payments under that royalty until 2028, uh, and that is only if we have uh, achieved a development decision and started developing uh, the project by then. So it's it's a very good deal. Uh, we have the right to buy back half of the royalty at a 12% in internal rate of return. Uh, for Franco and uh, 
uh, if if necessary, we can reduce that royalty down to uh, around about half a percent. It's important to note that that is considerably less than the flex that is offered uh, in the royalty negotiations with the Ecuadorian government. And importantly, we'd uh, benefit from $100 million up front. So uh, it's a great deal for shareholders, all shareholders. It might not be the favoured method of financing um, for the majors, um, but we're here to look after all shareholders and not just the majors. Next slide. So the rationale for uh, corner, uh, Cornerstone shareholders is that um, your future is uh, inextricably tied to uh, the fortunes of Soul Gold. And the best thing that can happen uh, to Soul Gold is to have uh, a great uh, project outcome. Uh, currently, Cornerstone shareholders face uh, significant project financing risks. Um, and if Cornerstone's 15% uh, interest falls below 10% uh, through a failure to contribute to uh, its share of uh, project costs following feasibility, then Cornerstone would reduce to a 0.5% NSR royalty, which Solgold could purchase at any time for US $3.5 million. Um, that would be a way worse outcome for Cornerstone than uh, than Cornerstone shareholders accepting the sole gold get, bid. Cornerstone's uh, uh, position in the project is only debt funded to the completion of feasibility. It's, it's not a, a free carried interest. At the completion of the feasibility study, uh, Cornerstone will have to uh, repay out of 90% of its share of proceeds from the uh, project. Uh, uh, its, its share of the costs uh, to date. So um, it's, uh, it's currently owing $31.2 million to Sol Gold, and it's anticipated by the end of the study that it'll owe some $52 million um, to uh, Sol Gold, and that will have to be uh, repaid. Um, Cornerstone is not able to uh, secure borrowings um, for their share of development over its share and answer. The, um, the shareholder agreements uh, specifically exclude that. And um, it's anticipated that, uh, that the, the cost for, uh, for Cornerstone would be some $405 million versus Cornerstone's current uh, capitalization of some uh, $89 million US. So Cornerstone uh, would have to equity fund that um, and that would result in uh, a dilution to Cornerstone shareholders of around about um, three times, three to four times their, their current position uh, in Cornerstone. Um, as a result of that, um, uh, raising equity, they, they would suffer uh, a huge solution, whereas in, in Sol Gold, um, that wouldn't be the case because we would be looking to fund the project on um, the basis of the outcomes from the feasibility study, and that would be largely with uh, low-cost debt um, and uh, off debt-funded offtake agreements that we're uh, working on and hope to make some uh, significant and announceable progress on um, in the, uh, the forthcoming months. Currently, uh, we're trading at a, uh, a premium of around about 22% over uh, Cornerstone's uh, price on the TSX, and it's a premium of around, around about 56% based on the volume weighted uh, trading price over the last 12 months. So the Stole Gold bid for Cornerstone um, is indeed generous from a premium point of view. It obviates the Cornerstone shareholders from the risks of not being able um, to uh, get their share of the project funded and resulting in a, a royalty which Sol Gold would purchase for only $3.5 million. It also provides 
Cornerstone shareholders with the opportunity to take part in the uh, likely exploration successes that Solgold will enjoy on its regional exploration uh, pipeline over the, uh, the forthcoming years. So that combined with the uh, uh, with the, the reduction in, in financing risks and the benefits from a, a strong and experienced and internationally recognised uh, exploration and management team uh, will provide Cornerstone shareholders with the upside uh, to feel safe and optimistic about their investment um, in, uh, in this company. Thank you. That's terrific, Nick. Um, I just ask, ask um, Ashish if he could put uh, the, the cover page of the presentation on and Nick and I will stay on and we'll begin the question and answer period. As I mentioned at the outset, the, we have had, uh, we have, uh, the, the, at the outset of the webinar, we've asked for questions, both live over the course of the webinar and pre-registered questions. So we're gonna begin with some of the pre-registered questions that have come in over the last few days, Nick. So I'll, I'll begin them. Question number one, why have, you, why have you bid for Cornerstone? What is the strategic advantage of owning Cornerstone at the, at the price offered compared to allowing and trying to come up with the funds for continue to be a minority investor in INSA and thus having a chance to pick Cornerstone up for three and a half? You know what, Nick? I, you spent the last five minutes of the webinar answering that question. I don't know if we need to answer it again. Is there anything else you want to add? Uh, it's obviously... Uh better to have the whole project rather than um, than just 85% of it. And uh, as we gradually mature um, this project and as we gradually um, uh, gain the confidence of the world's capital markets from a development funding point of view, um, the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the price to net asset value ratio will uh, increase and uh, there's obvious upside for all sold gold shareholders as a result of that. Uh, we believe that the same benefits can accrue to the current Cornerstone shareholders and uh, we're prepared to uh, give away uh, equity in, in sold gold to accrete that value. Uh, and it'll be good for all Sol Gold shareholders, including um, Cornerstone shareholders accepting the bid. So it helps to consolidate the project. It helps to uh, focus capital markets' attention on one vehicle rather than uh, rather than two, and uh, it obviates uh, the risk for Cornerstone shareholders of. Uh, not being able to fund um, their uh, share of the development costs in order to maintain at least 10% interest. So, I mean, we're not being mean-spirited about this. Um, if we were as, as mean-spirited as a lot of uh, Cornerstone shareholders think that we are being, then we wouldn't bid at all um, because I, I do believe that um, the... Uh, the risks uh, for Cornerstone shareholders in Cornerstone trying to fund its uh, upcoming share of uh, development costs are significant. Um, and uh, uh, I don't think that uh, that's a good idea for them. So uh, it's obviously a smarter thing to do to have 100% of a project than 85% of it. Um, uh, we will get to 100% of it one way or another, we're sure, but um, this is a, uh, a quicker, cleaner way of doing it. Thanks, Nick. Number two, when will Franco Nevada get on site for their final DD? How long after the site visit will they have to confirm the deal? Uh, the Franco Nevada deal is... Um, uh, has a number of conditions precedent, um, one of which is um, Franco uh, completing um, its due diligence. Uh, included in that due diligence 
on Franco's uh, terms, there is a site visit. Franco can um, vary or waive that at their discretion um, at any time. Um, we are working with Franco to expedite uh, uh, satisfaction of that uh, DD condition. I can't tell you exactly when that will happen. Uh, suffice to say that we are um, working um, to make sure that it does get addressed and we expect uh, an outcome on that in the near future. Great, thanks Nick. Next question, when can we expect drill results from the regional programs? Will there be a steady flow of news? That depends very much on uh, the management of the COVID protocols in uh, Ecuador and the speed with which uh, drilling and water permits issue from the regulatory authorities in uh, Ecuador. Um, again, those, uh, those permits are challenged by the, uh, the COVID situation, uh, but we are mobilising drilling rigs to uh, Port Venera and La Hueca. Uh, at the moment, and we expect um, that uh, in the next couple of months we will have uh, drilling results which will uh, flow from those projects. And then there should be a string of them um, thereafter. So out of those 13 different project areas through uh, the three parallel met metallogenic belts over 700 kilometres from north to south in Ecuador, uh, we have... 13 other projects which were selected on the basis of the same gross geological characteristics as, as our power. And uh, we have found uh, major mineralized systems on every one of them. Um, and five or six of them uh, certainly show uh, outcropping mineralization, which is uh, more extensive and higher grade uh, than that which we found at surface at our power. So we're highly optimistic uh, about the likelihood of very encouraging results um, from these project areas. And we look forward to a flow of drilling results from them um, over the next uh, couple of months and uh, extending for a long time thereafter. Terrific. Next question. Will the DFS next year truly be bankable to give you the option to develop El Palo yourself? That's what we're aiming for, and uh, we're conducting all of the necessary work programs uh, well before we complete uh, the PFS to ensure that we can get um, a final feasibility study uh, completed uh, very rapidly and, uh, and get the project unconditionally funded. So we're working on conditional funding packages at the moment, which we'll see uh, the raising on a conditional basis of uh, $2.7 billion from uh, off-takers and other debt providers. Um, and, uh, and that will uh, uh, become unconditional as we, uh, as we deliver um, a set of uh, uh, permitting requirements, fiscal agreements with the Ecuadorian government and, um, and the feasibility study. So we're working on all of these major streams in parallel uh, with a view to having all of those conditions evaporate uh, around the time that the final feasibility study is completed. So it's a bit of a different strategy to the way most majors attack these projects where they do things sequentially. Uh, we're doing them in parallel. Thanks, Nick. Next question is a two-part one. Uh, how much will it cost on a 100% or 85% basis uh, to A, get to bankable feasibility on El Pala and B, conduct your planned exploration activity uh, that you're looking for on your regional uh, target? $150 million to get to uh, final feasibility study, which uh, we are funded for. Um, uh, on on the, the condition that Franco Nevada's uh, deal completes and uh, $30 million on regional exploration and $10 million on um, 18 months worth of um, 
uh, general and, admin and, and administrative costs. So a total budget over about, around 18 months of $190 million, um, which we will uh, be fully funded for uh, following completion of the Franco Nevada deal. Terrific. Next question, Nick. As of the most recent date, when you know the number, how much expenditure does Cornerstone own of Sol Gold? Cornerstone's 15% share of any spend to date funded by Sol Gold rather than by the company itself. I think that was one of the numbers in one of the slides you dealt with, but I'll let you go yeah. over it. Yeah, uh, Cornerstone's obligation to uh, Sol Gold at the moment is uh, 31 uh, million dollars and that will become repayable out of 90 percent of their share of proceeds from um from uh from ensa uh after the thing gets into uh production the the anticipated uh debt to sol gold at final feasibility study stage will be uh, approximately 52 million dollars okay thanks nick next question given several of the largest cornerstone shareholders have publicly slandered sol gold management and you specifically and said the offer will not be as successful is there a plan to increase or negotiate the offer no that's very succinct. Next question. Is it true that Saul Gold has withheld and continues to withhold material non-public information in respect to Cass Sabell, including information on the progress of the ongoing pre-feasibility study at Cass Cabell? If false, why do Cornerstone claim it is true? Um, well, it is false. Um, I don't know why uh, Cornerstone are making that um, accusation. Um, Solgold is well aware of its um, obligations to report um, uh, material um, uh, information and events and changes um, as we move through the uh, pre-feasibility study and the feasibility study. In fact, um, uh, we have uh, made announcements concerning the uh, progress on our financing activities. We have made announcements concerning uh, the progress um, in the metallurgical studies. And uh, any time there is a material change to uh, what we have already announced in the uh, preliminary economic assessment, we will uh, announce Cornerstone have a 15% shareholding in ENSA. Um, this is not a joint venture. Um, they have a shareholding in a holding company. Um, Solgold has no fiduciary obligation um, to, uh, to Cornerstone. We are uh, very aware of our fiduciary obligations to our own shareholders and we're very aware of our reporting obligations um, in respect of uh, material developments or changes um, as far as they affect Sol Gold and we announce them when we encounter them. Terrific. Next question. Upon completion of the feasibility study, do Cornerstone have to pay all the funds in one go or can they state or as they state, can they repay from 90% of their earnings from ENSA? They can repay from 90% of their earnings from ENSA. Um, we've, we've never represented anything uh, to the contrary. They don't have to repay it in one hit. They have to repay it from 90% of um, the proceeds from ENSA to uh, Cornerstone. Next question. The Cornerstone news release stated the additional projects, most of which were acquired in 2017 through public bidding processes are subject to work expenditure commitments over an initial four year period that in total exceed 500 million US. Can you clarify which projects these relate to and what time period the money needs to be spent? The 
the work expenditure commitments um, are on a, a full four year uh, work program basis across 75 different uh, licenses. Um, ordinarily, the size of those licenses and the pro rider expenditure conditions would reduce uh, on them as we go through the expenditure uh, programs and some of those licenses that license areas would uh, would drop, drop off in their entirety. The 75 different license areas extend across the 13 um, different projects. So there's a number of license areas uh, per project. And the reason we did that was so that we covered them, those anomalies and the prospective areas in their entirety. But as we go through the programs, we will zero down um, into uh, smaller areas which have lower expenditure commitments on them. It's important to note, uh, and you can see that from the expenditure that we've undertaken on our PALA, that if any one of these project areas results in uh, a tier one discovery, we'll be expending somewhere in excess of um, uh, probably $200 million, taking it through the exploration phases into uh, feasibility. So no, uh, we're not concerned uh, about the size of the uh, prima facie expenditure commitments on these exploration areas because they will reduce over time and as we reduce and refine uh, the license areas pursuant to uh, the exploration programs that we're undertaking on them. Thanks, Nick. Next question. The price does not reflect that the company is now fully funded for the near future. Market confidence is so low in the company. Would you would it suggest that the marketplace do not believe that the company is capable of extracting the project quantities of gold and copper? Oh, well, clearly the market has some concerns about a number of aspects concerning uh, uh, the project and, and solid gold. Um, uh, in no particular order, there's been concern about the global copper and gold markets and they are uh, repairing. Um, there's obviously concern about our ability to raise $2.7 billion, but I can tell you, as our announcement in October last year detailed, we are making significant progress from the point of view of um, uh, debt-funded offtake uh, arrangements, and we've uh, also indicated that there are a number of uh, other uh, stream-related funding uh, opportunities which are way less dilutive to uh, shareholders than just issuing uh, straight equity. So we are working on, um, on those financing opportunities and they will uh, result, uh, we're confident, in uh, a re-rating of the, the Solgol price as a result. There are a number of technical aspects uh, which have been um, questioned in respect of the uh, the development of the project from a technical point of view, and we're addressing them, particularly uh, in logistics, the mining plan, uh, and the metallurgy. We've put out announcements about uh, the metallurgy. We are currently addressing refinements of the uh, the mining plan, the site logistics, and the tailing storage facilities. And we're very confident that um, that when we put the pre-feasibility study out, that the market will see that these uh, issues have been um, uh, uh, professionally and uh, and responsibly uh, addressed. So um, there's always um, when you're building a, a new company, not just um, one project, some doubts about whether you can do it. Um, and there have been a number of um, great entrepreneurs in the mining space around the world who have um, successfully um, overcome those challenges. And um, the, uh, the one that I refer to specifically would be uh, Andrew Forrest and the construction of Fortescue, who was, um, uh, you know, opposed and criticised left, right and centre for the construction of what, one of the world's great iron ore mining companies, but he did it. Um, and uh, I would never dare to place ourselves in the same category as Andrew Forrest, but 
Uh, it is possible. We are working on that. We do have the world's best exploration uh, and financial teams behind us, and this has been recognised from an exploration point of view on a number of occasions uh, internationally. And we have uh, one of the most superb asset bases over one of... Uh, uh, well, over the, the most unexplored 700 kilometre long section of the world's richest copper gold belt, the Andean copper belt. So, I mean, it was a little bit um, like finding an emerald in cow shit when we came across um, this opportunity in Ecuador. Uh, it had been unexplored from a porphyry copper point of view. Um, as a result of the, a number of uh, geological, technical, social and political and economic is, um, constraints. And uh, we saw the opportunity and that was what led us to um, get the pipeline of other highly prospective projects. And they're all based on the same macro geological and macro structural features that we see evident at... Uh, at Cascabel and will deliver the same uh, sort of exploration upside. And it's instructive to note that each one of these projects has at surface richer and more extensive mineralization systems than was evident at Alpala. So the mind boggles to us about what is under the ground there. And uh, we're eagerly awaiting getting the, the, the first drill holes into the most obvious of these, which is uh, which is poor veneer. And the opportunity is available for all Cornerstone shareholders to take part in that ride and to take part in the rides uh, that, that, uh, that we will see uh, coming from the re-rating of the Alpala project as we proceed to the pre-feasibility study. And as the value of the project is uh, further enhanced uh, as a result of rises in uh, copper and gold prices. Now, um, this will take a little bit of time. Um, uh, there's some uh, process and some programs and some uh, schedules and activities to get through, but we have the team. We're building on the team. Uh, we're uh, endorsing the requirements of the Ecuadorian uh, people and the Ecuadorian uh, economy and the government to build a mining industry for that nation and we will have a significant effect on the Ecuadorian economy and uh, we're inviting Cornerstone shareholders to take part in that rise and, and uh, come with us in the pursuit of that vision. Now, these things are not built overnight uh, and uh, we have discovered this ore body from scratch uh, starting in late 2013. We've put 228 kilometres of drill holes into this project. It has one of the most um, detailed and defined ore bodies um, that has ever been seen uh, in a project of this nature at, at, at this stage of uh, assessment and appraisal. And uh, the fact that Franco Nevada um, has uh, so willingly entered in into this agreement to provide us with uh, $100 million on the basis of a $3 billion uh, project. Valuation is testimony to uh, the quality of the project and um, to the uh, quality of the management uh, that has uh, uh, discovered and defined it uh, to date. Now, uh, that's the project basis. Uh, what does that mean to Sol Gold and what does it mean to Cornerstone? Uh, it means to Sol Gold as the, uh, as the managers of uh, ANSA and the major shareholder in ANSA that um, our future uh, is, is assured uh, from the point of view of this being the first project that will construct a major mining company. From Cornerstone's point of view, we believe that there are significant financing risks that the company still has to overcome uh, and uh, that's heavily constrained by an inability to debt fund um, this project if they need to provide security um, over their uh, shares and answer, which the shareholders agreement specifically prohibits um, without 
uh, without Solgold approval. It would also, if they were going to undertake it with uh, equity, mean a dilution uh, of about four times their current market capitalization in order to raise the money in equity uh, to fund their share of development to maintain uh, a 15% interest in the project. Underneath 10%, they will need to uh, take a 0.5% a net smelter return royalty, and we can buy that for $3.5 million. So the, the offer that we are making to Cornerstone shareholders is to accept a premium bid and accept a bid which sees the safety of your equity in this project preserved. Thanks, Nick. Next question. Um, what happened at Aguinaga? The fact that no drill results were ever released invites the conclusion that it's a dud, or are you planning a new investigation interpretation? Um, there's many ways of interpreting the uh, results from Aguinaga. Um, there's great exploration upside there. Um, it's not something that fits into uh, an Alpala uh, development program. Um, it's something along with Moran and Tandayama, which could uh, provide future upside uh, for an Alpala uh, development, but it's not something that um, uh, we would construct a resource on, uh, and it's not uh, something that makes a significant difference to the value that, uh, from a project point of view, that could be uh, that could be presented by uh, Alpala. And, and as I point out, the, the value uh, of Alpala is very different to Sol Gold um, than Cornerstone. Okay, ne next question, Nick. Why is Sol Gold not given its shareholders the opportunity to buy more shares through an open offer? Seems like retail, to use that disparaging term, investors are at the bottom of your list, yet they can be the most loyal during a takeover situation. Um, they're certainly not at the bottom of the list. Um, we, in the last uh, couple of equity issues, we've taken steps to try to uh, strengthen the institutional shareholder base for uh, for Sol Gold when it when it comes ultimately uh, time to uh, raise some part of uh, a development project financing. Um, through the issue of equity, you want to have a strong uh, institutional uh, shareholder base. We're obviously in times of very low interest rates trying to minimise the amount of equity that uh, we would need, but being realistic about it, at some stage we're going to need more equity. So you want a strong uh, institutional uh, shareholder base. Um, uh, anybody can go and buy uh, sell gold shares uh, on the market, I'm quite sure that there are uh, plenty of opportunities um, to buy uh, shares in the company at lower prices than uh, we've seen the number of the equity issues at. So um, uh, we don't ignore uh, small shareholders, um, <clears throat> not at all. Thanks, Nick. Next, next question. With, with Newcrest appointing RBC Capital Markets to explore options for their stake in Sol Gold and openly <coughs> stating that the, they see the Franco Nevada financing deal as a risk to shareholders, are there any reassurances excuse me, you can give shareholders as to why this Franco deal is the best option going forward? And does it really pose a transfer of risk to shareholders as Newcrest have stated? Um. No, I regard the Newcrest uh, comments as rather self-serving. Um, Newcrest um, uh, would have liked uh, all of the capital raising to be uh, done as uh, equity, and I rather suspect that they would have liked most of that equity to go to themselves. Um, uh, I think they pulled Craig Jones off the board, and they did pull him off the board. It wasn't entirely voluntary. Um, 
because they didn't want him compromised either in respect of the technical knowledge that he has about uh, block caving uh, developments, um, nor did they want him compromised in the event that there was um, any corporate manoeuvre by uh, Newcrest in terms of uh, trying to get control of uh, of Sol Gold, so definitely not in our interest or any shareholders' interest to uh, see cheap equity going to Newcrest or BHP or any company for that matter without them making a full and fair takeover bid for uh, the entire company. So we didn't want to see the uh, premiums sh that should naturally accrue to all shareholders um, be dissipated through cheap equity placements to uh, a major shareholder. To raise $100 million um, at the market capitalisation that uh, Solgold uh, uh, was at um, would have required the issue of around about 20% or 20 to 25% of the company. It's clearly way smarter to issue a royalty which doesn't have to be serviced until 2028 for 1% for of the revenue from the, pro, the, the net smelter returns from the project than issue 20 to 25% of the company now and erode all the shareholder uh, control premium. Way smarter. That's why we did it, and of course, that's why Newcrest are complaining so much about it. Thanks, Nick. Next question. Now that Sol Gold have made an offer for Cornerstone, does that free up BHP to begin accumulating and purchase shares in Cornerstone or make a competing offer for Cornerstone? Not until October the 15th. As part of the Cornerstone offer, if not enough individuals tender their shares to Solgold to make a, tech over, a takeover successful, is Solgold going to still swap those that are for the 11 shares in the, in the subsidiary company? I.e. worst case scenario, Solgold would have an increase in stake in Cornerstone. Best case scenario, majority shareholders of Cornerstone do not tender their share and takeover is successful. Uh, at the moment, Sol Gold has issued a takeover bid pursuant to uh, the relevant laws and regulations in, uh, in, in Canada. And um, we aren't able to comment on uh, what we may or may not do should that bid uh, not be successful. Um, at the moment, we're... Uh, we're tendering for uh, Cornerstone it's in, in its entirety and we're not able to uh, take up any of those shares unless we have valid acceptances within the uh, prescribed um, time period for 50% uh, plus one uh, share in the issued capital of, of, uh, of Cornerstone. <clears throat> um, we're aware that uh, that there are statements by Cornerstone that they have um, uh, very large uh, rejection levels from Cornerstone shareholders. <coughs> we do not have, but are interested in uh, the details of uh, who and why uh, those rejections have been lodged. And we're very curious about um, the speed with which uh, they were lodged and um, the information bases on which those conclusions were made. Um, time will tell um, in respect of uh, whether all of those shareholders continue uh, to hold out against uh, what we believe is a generous bid given the alternative circumstances that uh, cornerstone and its shareholders may find themselves in. Thanks, Nick. Next question. Can Nick offer more commentary about the company's relationship with local, federal and national governments? What is going well and what can be improved? 
Uh, is that in relation to Ecuador? I believe so. It's not specific, but I think it's implicit. Right. Um, our relationship with um, the uh, governments in Ecuador at all levels is very good. We take um, a lot of pride in and put a lot of effort into the maintenance of uh, great relationships with um, Ecuadorian uh, uh, communities at all levels, whether they be individuals, families, um, local towns, uh, provincial centres, or indeed the uh, the national government. So uh, we we take the notion of uh, social licence to operate um, very seriously, and accordingly, uh, we have seen uh, tremendous support uh, locally and nationally uh, for the company during the. Uh, the recent uh, uh, campaigns to uh, uh, try and upset mining in uh, some of the local provinces. And this is um, a result of the, the great efforts of our people on the ground and uh, in, in Ecuador generally. We have a 97% Ecuadorian staffed workforce. And... Uh, uh, we continue to put a lot of effort into maintaining those relationships uh, on the ground uh, and in uh, in the uh, national capital, uh, Quito. Thanks, Nick. Um, is it your understanding, a related question, is it your understanding that the mining caster will, op will still reopen in Q4 2020? Uh, well, that's the latest information that uh, that we have. Um, we have uh, also been informed that um, uh, that the the most advanced of those um, applications, of which uh, twenty of ours uh, fit into, are uh, are going to be granted. Um, uh, we can't. Uh, preempt what the Ecuadorian government will do, however, in respect of um, delays or variations to that schedule. Um, we are uh, always optimistic that they'll stick to it um, and uh, a, a few more targets will emerge as a result of uh, the opening of the cadastre in that regard. Okay. Nick, um, on the live stream today, obviously uh, Cornerstone put out an announcement I've got a, a series of questions. I'm just going to ask uh, Senator the General, any comments read today's cornerstone announcement re-removing the board of Saul Gold? Um, <laughs> well, it seems to be an unnecessarily uh, destabilizing uh, initiative. Why would want to uh, remove uh, the board of a company that wants to accrete value in one of the world's great uh, porphyry copper gold projects rather than just advertise it for sale is, uh, is beyond me. Um, I'm, uh, uh, I'm not sure what the, uh, uh, what the motivation is there other than uh, vengeance. Um, I can't really comment. I mean, we're confident that we're uh, that we're doing a good job. We have um, a lot of uh, support and commendation from the uh, Ecuadorian government. I think um, these sorts of ructions are uh, destabilizing to the point that uh, uh, the governments may well question um, uh, what on earth is going on. Um, and uh, the world knows that, well, the, the investment community knows that these projects do not um, just materialise overnight. They take a long time to uh, emerge and develop. Uh, we are trying to push that process uh, as quickly as possible. And the best thing that can happen for uh, uh, all of the stakeholders in El Pala and Cascabel is to... Uh, get on with the job of uh, of proving the thing to be feasible, get it financed and develop it. And that's what we're doing. And uh, I'm not quite sure why you would uh, try to remove the board uh, of a company that was uh, trying to do that uh, in the interests of all 
uh, stakeholders. Um, it certainly uh, doesn't seem to be uh, a productive manoeuvre, but um, in any event, we'll be uh, confident of uh, defending uh, such an attack. Um, not quite sure uh, why they're trying to do that. Thanks for that, Nick. Um, you know, we're an hour and 15 minutes into the call. I'm just trying to find uh, potential questions that haven't we haven't already covered off. Um, this one I'm, I'm going to flag now. Have you received any informal takeover approaches from BHP? They've been very quiet through all this. Um, I can't comment on anything that, you know, we may or may not have received from any third party um, that wasn't uh, something that was necessary to be uh, announced. And Nick, um, you know, th there's been lots of questions, but the majority of them I've, I've gone through in detail while you've been speaking, and I think we've covered 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 the gambit here. So I want to I want to thank you today. I think you've been terrific, and um, we appreciate your time to come on and talk to all shareholders. We had a massive attendance today, and uh, we appreciate you being part of our, this webinar. Thank you very much, Bruce, and uh, thank you again to uh, Red Cloud. Uh, thank you very much to uh, all of the Soul Gold shareholders that uh, continue to. Uh, support us and uh, uh, believe in this project and believe in our uh, efforts and ability to uh, deliver not only the project but a, a world-class uh, copper gold major uh, because we certainly have the asset base to do that. And um, thank you to uh, the Cornerstone shareholders who we uh, continue to uh, believe will see the common sense um, in our arguments and uh, and believe that the best way to accrete uh, value here is to continue on um, with the uh, intense process of proving this project to be uh, feasible. Uh, we've, we've so far thrown um, uh, around $200 million at it, so we're clearly very, very committed. Uh, and that's uh, going to report well um, ultimately to uh, the pockets of all Cornerstone shareholders if you accept the sole gold bid. Um, if you don't, um, then uh, Cornerstone will need to somehow find its share of uh, at least 10% of the development costs and um, uh, I think there's um, some significant risks um, in going down that path from the Cornerstone shareholders' point of view. Terrific. Well, thank you all who attended the call. Have a great day. Thank you.